Hey guys, back for some more in chapter six. Some more pretty good problems today. Calorimetry, calorimetry problems. But we got to do jokes first. Okay, so here we go. Why didn't the skunk call his parents? Because his phone was out of odor. I don't know if we have any more good ones. Why are skunks so smart? Because they have a lot of sense. There you go. <laughs> and you're like, those are terrible jokes. And you're probably right. So, okay. Um, guys, we're going to get back where we were. What we were doing was we were doing, it was calorimetry problems. And it was Q, SMAT, or SMAT plus CAT. And if they add ask you to do kilojoules per mole, you always had to do two problems. You had to do the SMAT or the SMAT plus CAT, plus you had to look at a balanced equation in the ice table. So we're going to look at two more with uh, that way to solve for delta H. So let me uh, kind of review here. Um, okay, so he, here is uh, the next problem we're going to do, but, but let me back up and I'll do this in class too, just to kind of review, but going way back here. But I told you that there were two kinds, uh, or there was really like four kinds of, whoops, maybe I haven't got to the right spot. Yeah. The, the, the four different ways, here we go, to solve for delta H. Here at the bottom of this slide, stoichiometry, we looked at that. We have energy in the equation. Now what we're doing now is to calorimetry. And then we're going to get into Hess's law. So we're kind of moving along in the chapter. And then next week we'll go over from tables of standard values. And sometimes it's a combination of those problems. Okay. Okay, so let me get us back up to where we were. So there was there was stoichiometry, now calorimetry, we did that problem. We've done that problem. Okay, so here's the next problem. So again, just like all problems, I'm going to read this. And uh, <clears throat> one liter of one molar barium nitrate at 25 is mixed with one liter of one molar sodium sulfate in a constant pressure calorimeter. A white solid forms, a precipitate forms. The temperature of the solution rises, assuming that the specific heat is 4.18 and the density is 1, the heat capacity of the calorimeter. So they're telling then, Remember, if they give us the heat capacity of the calorimeter, it's going to be SMAT plus CAT. This is write a thermochemical equation for delta H in kilojoules per mole. Okay, so this one again, just like most problems we have in our class, as I'm going to list out everything this problem tells me. So here we go. I'm sure you guys can see this. <clears throat> Okay, so it says we have barium nitrate, and it says we have one liter of one molar is mixed with sodium sulfate. It is also one liter of one molar. Uh, and a constant pressure calorimeter. So again, we're never going to concern ourselves with volume here. We're just going to do, when it's, it talks about calorimeter, it's going to be Q-SMAT. If it doesn't give us the heat capacity of the calorimeter, or it'll be SMAT plus CAT. Okay, so white solid form. So there's, I'm going to write out the equation. And so the temperature initial is 25. And the temperature final is 28.1. The specific heat is 4.18. The density is 1. And the heat capacity, so I'm going to say capital C, the heat capacity is 5.0 joules over degree Celsius. So I'm going to need a lot of the board here to do this. It says write a thermal chemical equation. And I will tell you on the Chapter 6 test, you will have to write a thermochemical equation. So there's always, when we're 
trying to do this in kilojoules per mole, we're really going to do two separate problems. We're going to do the kilojoules, we're going to do SMAT plus CAT, and then we're going to look at the balanced equation. So first of all, if I come back here and I do the balanced equation, so I'm going to do the outers and the inners. So we have barium sulfate and then sodium nitrate. And I'll put a two there like that. And, uh, and then if I go, I, I know that these are in solutions. This is aqueous. This is aqueous. This has to be the solid. And this is aqueous. So if I write just, and I always want to define moles, kilojoules per mole. So what goes in the denominator? I want to define that in terms of moles of product in the net ionic equation. So here I'm going to have barium plus sulfate. This is the net ionic equation. So what I did is I took out took out the sodium and the nitrate. And so for moles, if I take, so again, moles is molarity times liters. So I have one, I have one and zero. So in this case, they're both spectator ions. So this one is kind of a, a simpler because it's all in kilojoules, or it's all in, in everything is one. So, so I know. So, what I'm trying to find here in the 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 value for delta H is kilojoules per mole. And like I said, define moles in terms of in the net ionic equation, the moles of the product. So, the moles are one. Okay, now to find the kilojoules. So now that's where I'm going to use this data. And because it gives me the heat capacity, uh, I'm going to do uh, SMAP plus CAP. Okay, so again, because they gave me the heat capacity, so the specific heat, you really got to watch the units here. So there's the specific heat and the mass, it said that the density was one. It was one gram per milliliter. Well, I had one liter plus one liter. So for the volume, I have one liter plus one liter is two liters, which is 2,000 milliliters. And then if I use the density, one milliliter for one gram is 2,000 grams. Okay, and then delta T, if I subtract these two, is 3.1. So the specific heat, the mass, again, I use the 2 liters, which is 2,000 milliliters, is 2,000 grams, and then delta T. And then this, I use the value for C. And then I use the same delta T. Again, I always know if I'm on the right track if I look at the unit. So in the SMAT part, grams cancel out, degrees Celsius cancel out, and here degrees Celsius cancel out. So if I do the math, I don't know where my calculator is at. There it is. Okay. So if I do the math, so I have 4.18 times 2,000 3.1 gives me, and I'll come back and worry about sig figs at the end. That's in joules, and when I do 5 times 3.1, it's 15.5 joules. So both in joules, so if I add this up, what I get is 25,931.5 joules. Okay, now I'm going to go back and look at sig figs here. And this value, which is a constant, which shouldn't determine sig figs. So I think I should have two sig figs though, because when I subtract it here, remember when you subtract, you round based off the decimal place. So I'm going to make this 26,000 joules, which is um, 26 kilojoules. Okay, so then if I come back up here, 26 kilojoules. So my delta H value 
is 26 kilojoules per mole. And always this step, and I think on the last video I forgot to do this, is in the last step is the sign. Is it negative or is it positive? Well, if the temperature increases like it did here, it's negative. So this would be negative 26 kilojoules per mole. Okay, but that is not that is not done. So I said to write a thermochemical equation. Okay, so I'm going to go over here. So the thermochemical equation then is going to be the net ionic equation. So I'm going to go back to what I had before is the net ionic equation. And I can do one of two things. I can put in the, the, the delta H value because this is, uh, because it's exothermic, the energy is on this side, or I could write it like this. Either way is acceptable. Either way is acceptable. So there's. Bottom line, the answer. So there's the delta H value, and there is the thermochemical equation. So I'll go back here for a second again if you guys wanted to look at anything with that. Okay, good problem. Like I said, on the next test we'll have, on Chapter 6, I guarantee we will have a problem like that. Okay, so now I go back to that same... Messed up on my technology. Okay, so now if I go back to that same slide. Now I'm going to do this. Okay, so how would this problem change if 0.3 moles of the Ba plus 2 and 0.4 moles of the SO4 were mixed and the heat from the calorimeter measured 7.77 kilojoules? Okay, so now. So in this, this case, we don't have to go through SMAP plus CAT. this case, they told us that the energy, so they told us that it was 7.77 kilojoules at this time. So again, now if I go back to my balanced equation, This time, this time they told me that I had 0.3 of this and 0.4 of this. So I go back to an ice table. See, I'm trying to solve again for kilojoules per mole. And it's like two separate problems. This time, though, they just gave me this. I didn't have to do SMAT plus CAT, but I don't know moles. So again, remember, we define moles in terms of the moles of the product form. So here's zero. In this case, this is limiting this. So so like I said, so the number that's going to go for moles is going to be the moles of product formed, which is 0 0.30. So I'll take 7.77 divided by 0.3, which gives me 25.9. <sighs> Or I guess in terms of sig figs, 26. And again, remember the unit, remember the sign. You always got to go back in the sign because it said that uh, we're added in heat from the calorimeter measured. So I'm assuming again it's exothermic. Okay, so in that case, we were given the value for the heat content. Okay, but pretty good problems. And these are problems I really want you guys to look at. And if we need to work more of them, you got to let me know. Okay, one more problem with, and this is really the heart of the chapter is what we're doing now. Um, this is the, the calorimetry part. Okay, so we've done, we've done that. Okay, so here's one more problem. And then we're going to look at the, at the go on to the, the last two ways, which we'll probably do in class. So some people think that H2 would be a good substitute for methane in homes. So compare 
and really watch the units. Temperature rose by 7.3. Okay, and then the H2, and I'm going to write this all out, calculate the energy of combustion. And notice, too, the problems in the book. So when you guys are watching this. You guys have done now with the Chapter 5 test, and we really got to be moving into Chapter 6. Okay, so again, I'm going to erase all this work that I've done. So here we're comparing the uh, we're comparing methane to CH4, okay, or methane which is CH4 to hydrogen. So the methane, again, I'm just going to list it all out. It says that we have 1.50 grams. It says that the calorimeter watch the units the calorimeter is 11.3 kilojoules per degree celsius and the delta t so they just told us the delta t is 7.3 degrees celsius okay and then for the h2 we have 1.15 grams the calorimeter is the same That's the heat. That's the heat being absorbed by the the calorimeter, and the delta T here is fourteen point three degrees Celsius. And what they want us to solve for here is the energy in kilojoules per gram. So we'll compare the two. Okay. So if I do the CH four, what I'm going to do this time, they didn't give me specific heat. It did. Uh, it gave me the mass, but because it, it just gave me C, it didn't give me specific heat. I'm not going to worry about specific heat, so I'm just going to do C times delta T. Again, so it didn't give me that. So a lot of times, most of the time in these calorimetry problems, it's going to give you specific heat. But if it doesn't, then you don't worry about it. So I'll take C and I'll multiply by the temperature change. If you look at the units there, then what happens is, is degrees Celsius cancels out. So I have 11.3 times 7.3, which is 82.49, or 83 kilojoules. And then it says to, to do this in kilojoules per gram. So divide by the grams. So I get 55, and this would be it. The unit would be kilojoules per gram, and it would be negative because, again, it's exothermic. Okay, so again, because it didn't give me specific heat, I'm not, this was actually not a SMAP or a SMAP plus CAT. This is really a CAT problem because it didn't give me the specific heat. Okay, so now if I do the same thing for H2, so I'll do C times delta T. So the C value is still 11.3, but the delta T it's 14.3 degrees Celsius. And again, a lot of times for me, and I didn't write this out right, this should be 11.3 kilojoules per degree Celsius. The units always tell me if I'm on the right track. So 11.3 times 14.3 gives me 162 kilojoules. And then I'll divide by the grams. That gives me 141, so that would be kilojoules per gram, and this then would be negative. Okay, and then if you look at this then, hydrogen would be better for heating up the house. I think the problem is, is to get the system set up to use hydrogen, but you can argue from a calculation standpoint with this data, our homes use natural gas gas, but hydrogen per gram would give us more energy. Again, it's, we, we would need just to set up the, uh, the systems to do that. Okay, so that concludes calorimetry, and I'm almost done, so that's good news. Uh, now I want to go into just briefly discussing this, and we're going to do this in class. So we've talked about stoichiometry, we've talked about calorimetry now. 
Okay, now we're going to, and again, note those problems. And, and really now you should really be moving into chapter six. Okay, and there's a lot of words here, and I'm going to do this in class, but here is another way to solve for delta H. It's called Hess's law, and you never need to know the name of the law, but what you want to do is you want to flip the equation so you end up with the total equation. And this is where I'm going to start class next week. And these, these notes are a little bit different, I think, than what I have on, online, so we should note this, but this will be a good place to start next week. So guys, have a good weekend, and I'm hoping you guys are looking at chapter six now, and we just keep moving and just doing the best we can. Have a good weekend, guys. Get rid of this, and I'll sign off. All right, guys, have a, have a good weekend.